Hi, it's Jen Healy with the Airx Yoga Swing, and I'm going to share with you some new sequencing that I've been working on for quite a while. But I call it the crisscross sequencing, and we're going to use the leg loops in a different formation. Right now, this is the leg loop, where both sides of it are hooked onto the same carabiner, and we're going to drop them straight down to begin. Okay, just the one side of the leg loop. We don't take the carabiner off. And then what we're going to do is cross it over so that it looks the same position as the swing. So that goes across to the carabiner and then second leg loop hooks on to the other carabiner. So we actually have two swings in one. Two leg loops equals the width of the swing. So you actually do get two swings in one with this design. Then what we're going to do, I'm going to go into a whole X factor sequence to end, but I want to put the swing behind my back and the leg loops out in front of me. Now once I'm here, I'm going to come into my sumo squat, right? So I have them X'd, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put these on my ankles. So let's come through a floating Buddha sequence and see what that's like with the leg loops crossed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come through with my chillaxin arms and do a little bow and arrow action back and forth, stretching the legs and noticing that all the energy is pulling towards the center line. And so the tension is when I pull away. And so it's using a totally different muscle group than what we normally do with our floating Buddha and the seated postures here. So let's go ahead and take a few moments to just feel that stretch, feel what it's like, maybe come to the edges and hang out there a little bit more. It should feel really good. We're keeping the hips heavy and the heart open and the head relaxed just like our normal practice, but we're pressing down strongly with the ankles. So after coming through a few of the bow and arrow, let's go ahead and come into swing bada. Feet together, knees open wide, and just feel the difference here. So we're going to come into the diamond arms as well, chillaxing hands. <sighs> just take a moment, diamond with the feet, diamond with the arms. And then flying monkey, reach around for your knees, slide up the leg loops, the outer leg loop as high as possible. Press your hips up, lean back. Let that feel good on the neck and shoulders. So delicious. One more time, drop the hips, inhale, lift. Press up and lean back at the same time. Stretching the neck, front of the chest, and then exhale, lower. And then we can come through a wide straddle, holding on to the toes, and do a few thigh master positions for a forward fold, like we do in our leg stretches. We can hold on for another variation of bow and arrow. Stretch, stretch, stretch. This feels so good on the hip flexors and piriformis. Amazing. And then let's try our, our flow. We're going to come through star. Namaste, and then ladle, and notice all the energy is squeezing towards the center line. And we're going to try this in our chillaxin sequence as well. So let's try and feel the difference when we come into bow. We bend the knees and slide in, and you'll notice the same thing. It's like a rubber band pulling you back towards center. So we can have a little freeze frame from side to side into our swagger. And then we're going to let ourselves come through, child's inhale, open up, exhale, hug and squeeze, blossom for star, inhale, expand the arms and legs, keep the hips heavy, exhale, round in, child's, a few more breaths like that, inhale, expand, and then exhale, we're going to squeeze the legs straight, hands to prayer, press the hips up, lean back, namaste. In your namaste, you have a really strong forearm hook, and then you release that to let the swing slide across the hips into a version of ladle. We bring our hands overhead if we want. And then let's come into bow. We bend the knees, reach back for the feet, the ankles, whatever you can hold on to. Lift the hips, press the feet away from the heart. Big stretch, and notice that it's keeping the alignment. Now my knees are pulling towards the center line, so my hips stay level with the knees, and this is going to create uh, more space for the sacrum. It's a better position for the lower back. It's also much more, dip more difficult to keep the alignment. So release, reach up, grab for the swing, inhale, head up, 
exhale, hips down. <sighs> and just take a pause. I want to go ahead and show you how we can come into a seated pigeon version of this. So we're going to get our right foot on top of the left behind the leg loop and hang out here. I definitely like a lot of sway and play in the swing. Just feels good to hope to help open up the connective tissue. And then we can stack the knees. You'll notice that we can come into a cross-legged position really easy here. And if you need to adjust, go ahead and adjust. Make sure it feels good. But then grab for the feet, either one hand or both hands. Grab for each outer edge. And then this is like a gomakasana, but we're gonna lift the heart and lean back, uh, come into a supported back bend there, and that takes pressure off the underarm. So if it's too much on your arms, just lean back. Let that feel good. Slowly release, go ahead and do a, an extended leg. So the right leg just slides up. We can do a twist, extended leg twist, reach for the outer edge of the foot, tee the arms, and look over your right shoulder. Take a few deep breaths there. And then switch sides. So slowly unfurl. Get the left foot on top of the right. Seated pigeon to begin. Add a little sway and twist from side to side. See how that feels. Roll the ankles around and flex the toes back. And then you'll notice you'll just naturally slide into a cross-legged position. So once we're here, this might be enough of a stretch. Or your right hand can go for the left foot. Or both hands can reach for the outer edge of the feet. Now it's a big stretch, so maybe you just hold on to one and then like inch your way down, which is fine. Or if you can grab, you're gonna lean back and open up the chest. Ah, oh, so good. Arch and open, squeezing the bottom tips of the shoulder blades together. When you come on back down, release the left foot and let it slide up. So first we come back into chillax and arms and maybe do a little twist here. And then if we want to extend the arms out into a T, you can grab for the outer edge of the foot. There's a leg loop there to hold on to if that's easier, but you're just going to deepen the twist. Take a few deep breaths. Make sure the hips stay heavy. They're going to want to float away, so press them up and then press them back down to get a little bit more length in space. Okay, great. And then we're going to go ahead and release nice and slow. Come on back to your swagger position. Everything that we do in both chillaxin and floating Buddha can be translated into the, the X, the crisscross position. But what I'm going to do now is turn around so you can see me come into our X factor variation. So this would be the, the cross X. The leg loops are going to come off nice and easy. I'm going to come to stand and I'm going to show you from a standing position how to get into the swing. It's a little bit easier. I want to keep the X and turn around. I get the arms through and then I want to position them on the shoulders in a way that feels good. Okay, so that's the first thing I lean back. Now I have to push the swing forward and time it to get my foot up. We can all do it. Get your foot up there one way or another. And then what you're going to do is your standing foot is going to also join straight legs into the swing oh, and then just play with some variations, some wiggles, some sway from side to side. The more you push your hips up, the deeper the stretch. So arms overhead or chillax in arms is a really good idea, but you're welcome to play here and see how it feels. You want to really pull these apart so there's perfectly placed on the traps. Oh, that way they feel good. <laughs> and then when you're ready to transition, we're going to go for the bent knee version. It's a little bit easier. And then you'll notice there's less weight in the upper body. And then we're going to reach for the swing, slide it up all the way above the bum. So we want it to sit on the iliac crust, right where the lower back meets the glutes. Push the swing away. Get a hop, widen around, and then from here adjust the leg loops again. So we're going to come through what I call love bug in the X Factor routine. You're going to curl up into a ball, feet together, knees wide, and then inhale, arch and press your hips up and forward. Exhale, slide in. Take a breath there. Inhale, arch and open. So this is the 
sweetness in the pose. This is the, the real treat, is to get all this tractioning through the neck and shoulders. This area is so tight on people, and it's just a really comfortable way to come into a variation of the shoulder stand. After our last one, we're going to straighten the legs. We don't hook the feet. We let the feet just come out wide and press the hips straight up and down. If you need to, you can hold on to the top of the leg loop and pull to adjust. If you have a little shirt on, it helps to slide. Otherwise, it can get a little intense uh, on the skin. So a little fabric is helpful. And then we're going to do some neck work. I'm going to turn my ear towards my shoulder and get a stretch through the scalenes. I can do it a little twist in the hips at the same time. So when I'm looking over your left, my right hip pushes forward. Okay. And then if I look over my right, my left hip pushes forward. So I'm adding a twist. And then the hands can get involved and do a little yoga massage. I like using a little tractioning along the sides, pulling straight down or twisting. It's so amazing how much tension lives along this platform here where the neck meets the shoulder. So any relief is welcomed. And then what we can do is actually come all the way through for a version of skydiver. I'm going to bring my legs together and around. So now I'm in my skydiver position which we do in our advanced practice. And we can do a little banking from side to side. So this is opening up the shoulders. It's pulling my shoulders down the back, doing that rotation to get proper alignment. And it's a little intense, so we're only gonna stay for a few breaths, and then we're gonna reverse it. Pull your knees together. You have to kind of like tuck, let yourself come back around. <sighs> Take a pause here, maybe curl up into a ball again. We're going to let the leg loops come off now, and we're going to let them slide around the waist, okay? So I take them off the shoulders, and now they're around the waist, like girdle, and doubled up. And now I'm going to let rele release my feet wide if I want to come into some leg stretches here. Everything that we do in X Factor, we can do in this pose, which is just really amazing. I do like to come into the half lotus, where I hook one leg, and then the other leg comes back behind me here getting a really big stretch through the quad and the belly. Just feels amazing. Switching sides, keeping it even. Wrap that leg around. So it's a half bow, which I call lotus. Okay, grabbing for the foot. Taking a pause. Oh, so good. Now I can't do both legs at once for a full bow because I'm gonna come right out of it. So just switch back and forth a few times like that. If you felt like getting fancy, you could come into some plank toe touches here because you're perfectly in position from your half lotus. Okay, there's so many features you can add on to the crisscross. Just feels so good. Let's try it on the other side. Plank toe touches coming through dancer. Dancers when you fully extend. And then when you're ready to come out, let's just do five on each side. Nice and slow and controlled. Then you're just going to let both legs come down and hang out in your sumo. Always stay seated for a few breaths. Oh, this way the body can acclimate to being upright. All those inversions are incredible for the circulation.